work to do. So there are a number of things that um, can help us in wound care, things that you can use from home again. And I'll give, if time allows, I'll give one testimony of, of where we used it. Eh? Um, and some of us who are online may probably know that testimony. But let me talk about wounds. Now, again, just write down. Uh, you can have a pen and a paper and write down because you can help somebody somewhere easily using this particular procedure. So we'll, the first step is to make an antiseptic. And one of the easiest antiseptics, again, we use garlic and onion. So what you do, you make an antiseptic by taking a, a two cloves of garlic, one bowl of onion, and soaking it in uh, a liter of water. So you, you mash it, or you blend it, or you crush it, or you pound it, or you grate it, anything to break up the garlic and the onion eh, into something like a pulp, and take that pulp, add a liter of water. Yes, add a liter of water. Some people use um, pints. I don't know how to convert, but any one liter of water. Yes, add it to it and let it sit for about 10 minutes so that what water takes the uh, uh, healing properties from the garlic so that the garlic elements are dissolved into the, into the water. Then use that water to irrigate the wound. Of course, if you have a bigger wound, then you'll need to make more. Yeah, but the ratio is, remains the same. Two, two cloves of garlic, one bowl of onion in a liter of water. So you irrigate. Irrigate means you don't just pour the water onto the wound, you, 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 you spread it slowly. Yeah? So that that liter, it will take you about 10 minutes for you to pour it onto that wound. So that that antiseptic soaks into the wound. We are not touching the wound, so you're doing it from a distance. So you're pouring slowly, yeah? dropwise, or in a, in a slow flow, so that it seeps into them into the wound yeah, within those 10 minutes. So uh, usually after you let the, the water, the garlic and onion sit in the water, it will be at the bottom. So you don't want too many of the particles to get into the wound. And you realize if the wound was, was painful, that the pain will subside. As I said, garlic is an anti-inflammatory. I've said that before, not in this forum, but garlic is anti-inflammatory. So it will sting the initial bits, but then after that, the pain actually subsides. So use that. Step one, make an antiseptic and use it to irrigate the wound. Once you finish that, wash the wound with clean water. Now we are not touching the wound. I'll repeat this over and over again. We are not touching it with our fingers. We're actually maneuvering it from a distance using water. So use a jet of water or, I mean, pour water so that now it's, you're washing it without having to handle it directly. Then the next step is what we'll do is what is called hot and cold um, alternate um, treatment. Eh? The type of hydrotherapy and you use hot and cold. I remember, uh, in the hydrotherapy treatment um, uh, explanation today, it said that whenever there is circulation, then there is life because the life is in the blood. And even in surgery, when they when they have, uh, let me give an example from hospital. When someone has a wound that is gangrenous, they usually sometimes go into theater operating room to see whether to decide before they amputate to decide whether they're going to amputate or not. So um, sometimes they do what is called surgical debridement. Eh? And when they're in theater, to know whether this, this wound is, is of no use trying to help, uh, whether they should amputate it or something that they should give more effort to try to revive, they usually poke it to see if it bleeds. So if it bleeds, then there's hope. Yeah, I'm just trying to emphasize the fact that when there's circulation, then that blood can bring in healing elements. It can bring in the oxygen for proper, uh, proper respiration. It can bring in the food and it can take away the waste. Yeah? So, when we are doing hot and cold is to enhance circulation because a lot of times a wound has been uh, that is chronic is full of pus and dead tissue so even blood is not coming in so it's it's very difficult to 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 heal because the body won't close up something that is rotten and it will try as much as possible to leave it's, it it is better open than closed because when it closes all that pus and rot will go back into the system and can easily kill you so the body you will realize when someone has a wound, a chronic wound, sometimes it tries to close, but it'll open up again because it, it'd rather that, that, that dirt or that rot be outside. So if we enhance circulation so that we get more blood flow, less of anaerobic, less of, of, of limited oxygen, because bugs, germs like limited oxygen, if we allow circulation to come through, then it'll enhance healing. So after the antiseptic, yeah, the pain has, has reduced. So now we can do what is um, enhanced circulation using a hot, hot and cold alternate treatment. So what is this? Basically, you take a towel as thick as possible because the thicker it is, the more heat, it, the longer it will retain heat. So you dip that towel inside hot water and wring it 
I think next time we might probably show how to do it. Some of you probably know, but there are a few things that you need to know when you're putting a towel in, because it's hot water, it can be with boiling water. Notice, you're not pouring boiling water on the wound, you're putting your towel in the boiling water. Now to make it easy for you so you don't burn, don't boil, uh, don't boil, don't put the ends into the water. Otherwise, it will be very difficult for you to wring it out. Yes. So you dip the middle part into the water and wring it out so that there's nothing dripping. So it's hot, but will not scald the person because this is very hot water. Yes. Then you apply, don't, don't, don't press on that towel, just apply it lightly on that wound. Let it stay there for three minutes. If the patient feels it's too hot, you can remove it for a while, then return it later until they get used to it. So you place it on that wound for three minutes. Usually by that time it has cooled. Then you have another towel that you've dipped in cold water. And again, you wring it and then you alternate the hot one with that cold one. And the cold one you put for only 30 seconds. Yes. Um, so you alternate hot and cold, hot and cold. What does it do? Again, it's a peripheral pump. When you put the hot, it opens up blood vessels, some of which at the wound site were blocked by pus or blocked by blood clots, whatever it is. So you open up, so you unclog them, yes? And then when you put the, and, and, and also because of the heat, it will almost liquefy, yeah? Break it down into smaller bits. So when you cool, put the cold, it, it, when, the, when the blood vessel contracts, it pushes it out, yeah? So it helps it to be um, to eliminate whatever was stagnating at that wound site. So we are doing a peripheral pump system, so to speak. So you put hot and cold, that's one round. Hot and cold, another round. Hot and cold, another round like that. And you can do up to six changes, sometimes even more. That wound was very purulent. So you do that, that's the second step. So let me review again. The first step was the antiseptic. The second step is hydrotherapy. So you brought in some, some blood. After that, you do what is called a garlic and onion poultice. Again, it will sting because garlic is hot, so is onion, but garlic is hotter. So now you make a poultice, the same ratio, two cloves of garlic, one ball of onion, you pound them into a pulp and you spread it on the wound, yeah? Or you pour it over the wound. Yeah? Um, now, if the wound is bigger than the pulp you have, you have made, you need to make more pulp. The same, same ratio, two cloves of garlic, one ball of onion. So if I had a very big wound that that, two cloves and one ball, uh, onion won't help. I'll go to four cloves and two balls of onion or six cloves and, and three balls of onion so that I have enough pulp or paste to be able to spread on the wound plus a margin of about a centimeter. Centimeter is about, I think, half an inch. Yes, um, yes. Uh, so it's not only the wound itself, but surrounding margin also, yeah? By about a, a centimeter or so. So you let it stay there. Now it'll sting and the person will cry. We try as much as possible for it to stay for 10 minutes. If they can, 20 minutes. If they can't, even if it reaches five minutes, it has done some work, yeah? Later on, the pain will subside. It will subside, it will make it much easier. So that is now a fuller dose of, of antibiotic. So to work on the pathogens that there may be enhancing production of, of pus or discharge, whatever it is. Um, so you remove the poultice. How do you do it? Again, we are not handling the wound directly. We use water. So you wash it with water, take some water and pour it over it, eh? like a jet, so that you can get rid of the, of the particles of the garlic and onion. So after that, you might find that the, the wound is slightly redder, yes, which is a good sign, by the way, when you're having wounds that are greener, there's more blood. Um, so after that, now you put a charcoal poultice. That's the fourth step, yes. First step was antiseptic, second step, hydrotherapy. Third step was poultice. Fourth step now is charcoal. Another poultice now is charcoal poultice. And a charcoal poultice we put in a cloth and then you apply on the wound and let it stay there for three hours. Yeah. After three hours, you got the next step. You remove the charcoal. That one will be easy because it, it wasn't directly on the wound. So when you remove the, the poultice with the cloth, you can make sure you dispose of it uh, well. You know? um, and then after that, now you air that wound for another three hours. Because uh, the previous, uh, I've, 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 I've explained what the other uh, steps do, yeah? The antiseptic was reducing pain, um, and then the hydrotherapy was bringing in blood, then the garlic and onion poultice was actually uh, acting as an antibiotic on that site. Then I used the charcoal poultice to just absorb any exudate or any discharge that may still be there. Then you want to air it because the sun, again, is another potent killer of pathogens, yes? And we air it because most pathogens like anaerobic conditions, yeah? So you find a lot of times people have chronic wounds and they're always being dressed. So we're trying to treat it, yes, but at the same time, your, your conditions are also allowing for the 
pathogens to thrive more because if it's always being dressed, there's less air. So you make sure that you're alternating the, uh, the poultice with some airing. So the sun will help to kill more bugs or more germs in that area. And the oxygen will inhibit uh, multiplication of most germs. As I said earlier, germs like uh, less oxygen. They thrive more where there's less oxygen. So you do that for, for, for three hours, yeah? The same, the same hours that you put the charcoal poultice. When you've aired it, now you start the process again from antiseptic step one, and step two, alternating hot and cold, and step three, garlic onion poultice, then step four, charcoal poultice. Now the second time, you put the charcoal poultice for longer, for six hours, you double the time. Huh? Now, um, uh, usually by the second time, hopefully by then there's less discharge, there's less purines. So you can do the, the, you can put the charcoal for longer because it will take longer to get saturated. Yeah? But in the event that there's still a lot of pus for some reason, then you'll still do three hours. But if you see that the pus has actually reduced, then the next charcoal poultice will actually take six hours. Yes. And after the charcoal poultice, again, it's airing. Yes, airing in the sun. Yeah. And then from then now you repeat that. Now from then on now, you may be doing the dressing maybe once or twice a day. But now when you put the charcoal poultice, preferably uh, you, can, you can time so that um, it's in the evening, towards the evening. Yeah? So that when the poultice is applied, the charcoal poultice, it can go now overnight. Yeah? And then in the morning it's removed and the air is done in the morning. So that's what you do with the, with the patient. Now, there are different reasons people might have chronic wounds, huh? and there may be at different places, it could be in the legs, it could be in the arm, it could be in the head. Yes, different reasons. It could be because maybe the, there was a snake bite or there's an, an, or whatever it is, or it could be because of certain parasites. There are some people who have seen parasites that enhance, that bring about chronic ulcers. It could be because they're diabetic, so they're not healing well. So apart from dealing with the, with the, with the wound locally, then you'll have to deal with the issues inside. So that if they're diabetic, uh, the, 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 the assurance of having completely treating that wound will depend on the sugar control. Yeah? Because one of the reasons that there's chronic uh, ulcerations in, in diabetics or that we get the diabetic foot is because of a lot of sugar, which damages the blood vessels. At the same time, the sugar is, is loved by the germs. So it becomes, a, once a wound starts, it starts as something very small, but it continues and refuses to heal. So we need to work on, on helping their diabetes. And, I'm, and, and Lois, I think, will be speaking on Wednesday um, on diabetes. Uh, so once you're, you're, you're helping the wound, you're doing local treatment on the wound, but you're also doing um, uh, a treatment, systemic treatment, working on the whole body. Yeah? If it was, it was a parasite, a certain parasite that cause chronic ulcers, um, you will deal with the local one. Also internally, like you may give them um, um, uh, natural remedies that can help the parasites. Uh, it could be garlic onion, it could be popo seed, it could be whatever else to deal with the parasite from, from uh, uh, internally. So you will have to work on the inside. Eh? One of the easiest ways is to use protocol just to help just to cleanse the body so that the body can be able to uh, get the raw materials. Yeah, Because as the wound heals, as the pathogens die and the body is ready to close the wound, it needs a lot of raw materials to cover up that, uh, that uh, area that has been that has been affected. So they'll need to be on a sound nutritional regimen to be able to ensure that they, are, they get the right uh, raw materials. Otherwise, the body is healing, but you don't have, it's like a house, you're trying to build a house, but you don't have raw materials, it wouldn't go far. So that is very, very important for the time that they're actually getting that treatment. So someone asked, um, someone with HIV AIDS, the wound treatment remains similar. Yeah, you deal with the other things, yeah? If it's cancer, the wound treatment is similar. But now that's because it's more of localized treatment. But it helps a lot because I know a lot of times many people even fear treating chronic wounds because they are smelly. Sometimes it's been there for so long. In Kiswahili, they say it becomes your brother. The wound becomes your brother. Yeah, so it's a, they call it a brotherly wound because it's constantly there, but it can be helped. And I've, uh, of, over the times that we have had different, different parts of the world treating people with, with wounds, um, it even does better than the standard uh, uh, system in the hospital because I know like uh, third degree uh, wounds sometimes may take even six months for a good caregiver not to get rid of it and with all the facilities in the hospitals. And if you do a good job on the, these wounds, even within the first week, you find that it's starting to dry. If it was wet, with exceeded all the time, you find that the wetness, even before that one week is, is gone, is trying to dry. And as it gets drier, then the body says, and it's time to heal. 
where I said earlier, the body will not cover up something rotten. If it's already out, let it stay outside. It'd rather be outside than inside, because if it's inside, it spreads the blood, you get septicemia, and that can, can take you, you can succumb very easily. So the body is actually working with you to say, it's already out, let's keep it out until we, we sort it out. So that can help us in the home, in the home scenario, to be able to help people with issues that have wounds. Um, any questions? There's a question. Very simple. Yes. Uh, Lana is asking, how big should the onion be when making the poultice? Um, I usually say medium size, yeah? So medium size may be different in different countries. But one way of gauging that's medium size is just drawing a finger with your thumb and your, the longest finger, the middle finger, yes? Medium size. It's usually that size. There's a... Um, yes, another question? There's a hand which is up, iPhone. Okay. Yes, good morning. Um, I know that I was in and out, but um, what I wanted to know if the hot water therapy, is that good also for, for like um, sciatica? Pain? Um, someone asked something similar, because sciatica is basically nerve pain, usually because of, of uh, the sciatic nerve is all that's affected in sciatica, yeah? A lot of times because of impingement of the, of the at the spinal level. Eh? So it will help to relieve that, but you'll also have to do localized treatment at the point of compression, yes, to relieve the, the inflammation, because usually there's inflammation at that particular point, yeah? Now, because this is the second time it's being asked, let me just say something else about this. Eh? Uh, the hydrotherapy will help systemically, because a lot of times if you're having someone who has a lot of sleep, this, there are other issues eh? that may be, um, that can be changed by diet, eh? so that we can strengthen the, um, the ligaments, because if there's a slip disc, that means uh, the, sometimes even the ligaments are loose, and sometimes the, the disc itself is dehydrated. Let me just say about that. Um, because apart from the hot foot bath, the hot foot bath will not be an end in itself. There'll be something else we'll need to do. You know, hydrotherapy internally is also vitally important for people who have slip discs. Yeah? Because what happens in the spine is we have discs in between the bones yeah, to pre prevent uh, uh, the bones from compressing nerves. That's why when you have, someone has a slip disc, then the nerves are actually compressed. Eh? So uh, um, you need to drink lots of water because the discs are, are um, hydro, they like water and they actually absorb water. When you have enough water in the body, it pumps up, it plumps up, yeah? It becomes like a cushion, yeah? Think of a cushion on a seat. It's not a cushion unless it has, it's, it's, it has some meat inside. Let me say some, some foam inside, whatever it is inside, some sponge inside. So if you remove the pillow from a pillowcase or from a cushion, it's just flat. If you put a pi the pillowcase or the covering and you sit on a hard bench, it won't give any, any um, relief from uh, when you're sitting down. So that's how the spinal disc works. When there's enough water, you absorb the water. Rather, the disc absorbs the water, it swells up. So it acts as a cushion. 